Hello everyone, this is Dr. Vaishnavi Dubey, third year resident from the Department of Radio Diagnosis at TNMC and BYL Nair Charitable Hospital. For the 23rd MRI teaching course, my topic for paper presentation today is Clinical Applications of MRI CSF Flow Metry. The normal CSF flow in the systole in the craniocaudal direction, it appears as dark and in the diastole in the cordocranial direction, it appears as bright. The image on the left side is a sagittal image and on the left side is the axial phase contrast image. There are two types of MRI techniques. The first one is a phase contrast and the second one is a time slip technique. We use the phase contrast in imaging at our institute. The anticipated maximum CSF flow velocity, also known as the VEG, it must be entered into the pulse sequence protocol to obtain the optimal signal. The mean VEG value is usually between 5 to 8 centimeters for standard CSF flow image. For velocities which are more than that of the VEG, it produces aliasing artifacts, and for velocities which are less than that of the VEG, it produces weak CSF signal. Quantitative CSF flow parameters. The first one is the stroke volume, is the average of the volume passing distally in systole and proximally in diastole. Normal value is usually between 30 to 50 microliters. Its use is in that of cases of normal pressure hydrocephalus. Absolute stroke volume is the sum of the volume passing distally in systole and proximally in diastole. It is used in post endoscopic third ventriculostomy patients. And the other par parameters include peak velocity and mean velocity. Clinical applications include post-operative follow-up of patients with neuroendoscopic third ventriculostomy and ventriculoperitoneal shunting. Pre-operative evaluation includes normal pressure hydrocephalus and KRE1 marker. The other indications are communicating hydrocephalus versus non-communicating hydrocephalus, level of obstruction in obstructive hydrocephalus, arachnoid cyst versus cisterna magna, flow patterns of posterior fossa cystic mass formations, and syringomyelin. So this is a patient with endoscopic third ventriculostomy. As we can see, there is good to and flow motion across the third ventricle, which suggests positive outcome of ET. And on the left side, we can see four images. The first one is that of the defaced image, which in which the background is visible, visible and the, the flow appears bright. The second one is the magnitude, in which the background is dark and the flow is bright. And the third and fourth one are the two and fro motions, in which they are also known as phase images, in which the background is gray and the motion is detected according to the flow. Here we can see is the axial phase contrast imaging which shows the to and fro motion. So the absolute stroke volume on Q flow imaging, it showed it came out to be 118 microliters. ETV stoma flow quantification, overall flow amplitude, also known as the absolute stroke volume in microliters, if it's more than 75 microliters, it indicates successful ETV outcome. Thus, our patient showed good ETV outcome. Classified into three categories, adequate flow, which is more than 75 microliters, low flow, 25 up to less than 75 microliters, and obstructed ETV stoma with impaired flow is less than 25 microliters. In VP shunts, it's a one-way valve mechanism, which is the flow is unidirectional and it is rhythmic. So because of very low CSF flow rates in shunt catheters, minimum vent, which is between 2 to 5 centimeters, is used for assessing VP shunts. No signal means no flow on phase contrast image. As we can see here in phase contrast MRI, it demonstrates a bright signal than the background, which has this patency at the site of the shunt. This flow pattern is consistent with the one-way flow in the VP shunt. In normal pressure hydrocephalus, significantly higher vent values, which are between 20 to 25 centimeters, should, should be chosen owing to the hyperdynamic CSF flow within the cerebral aqueduct. For shunt responsiveness, cutoff value for stroke volume is 42 microliters. As we can see here in phase contrast imaging, there's good to and fro flow. However, the pulse pressure is increased. In the Q flow imaging technique, average stroke volume came out to be 90 microliters, which shows good response post shunting of an NPH patient. Chiari 1 malformation, as we can see, there is herniation of the brain stem as well as the tonsils below, which leads to effacement of the anterior as well as the posterior subarachnoid space. So the size of the herniation is not always associated with symptom severity. In the preoperative patient, there is no flow across the uh, anterior subarachnoid space. And in the postoperative patient, post-surgical decompression, there is good to and fro flow. In 5 mm tonsillar descent, we can see there is good anterior and posterior flow. Thus, it means that if there is less tonsillar descent, there is less effacement. In 15 mm tonsillar and brainstem descent with syringomyelia, 
tonsillar and brainstem pistoning effect can be seen and there is absence of posterior flu. In tonsillar and brainstem descent of 13 mm, there is no anterior or posterior flu. So the degree of CSF flow obstruction rather than the degree of tonsillar herniation can better select patients who are most responsive to surgery. In obstructive hydrocephalus due to aqueductal stenosis, there is no flow at the level of aqueduct in both sagittal as well as axial face contrast image. Arachnoid cyst versus cisterna magna. Mega cisterna magna, pulsatile CSF flow can be seen throughout the dilated cisterna magna. Whereas in communicating posterior fossa arachnoid cyst, pulsatile flow into the cyst at the level of cerebellomedullary junction is seen. However, the flow is not present throughout the cyst and it is different from that of mega cisterna magna. Flow patterns of posterior fossa cystic malformations in dandy walker malformations, CSF flow MRI shows no communication between the cyst and posterior cervical subarachnoid space and hyperdynamic CSF flow through the aqueduct into the cyst produces turbulent flow within the cyst. In syringomyelia, it detects altered flow inside the syrinx cavity. It is predictive of subsequent enlargement and helps discriminate it from a myelomalacia. And it provides a direct evaluation for the follow-up and the post-operative survey in patients with syringomyelic cyst. Teaching points. Phase contrast MRI is a primary, non-invasive technique providing assessment of disruptions in the CSF compartment, both qualitatively as well as quantitatively. It plays a vital role in pre-operative decision-making and post-operative follow-up of patients. Thank you very much.